And so now in part two, which is what we're going to do today, we're going to figure out exactly how much tension or compression is inside each of these bridge members. Okay. Now that we know our two reaction forces at our two supports, we're ready to actually start analyzing each joint of this bridge to figure out what these internal member forces are. So how much tension and compression is either squeezing or pulling these members apart. Okay. And so what I like to do is start at the joint with the least amount of traffic. So for example, if I look at joint B, there's actually one, two, three, four members all coming together at that joint. And remember each member has an unknown force inside it. So that means there's four unknown forces at that joint. But if you recall, we only have access to two equations at that joint, some of the forces in the X direction and some of the forces in the Y direction. So if we have four unknowns and only two equations, there is no way we're going to be able to start at joint B. Uh, similarly, if we started at joint E or joint D, there's three members meeting at those joints, three unknowns. But again, we only have two equations, so that's not enough. We can't start there either. That leaves us with only two options. We can start our analysis at joint A or at joint C. Now I like to start on the left side, so I'm going to start at joint A, but technically C is just as valid of a choice. 